Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. It's always nice to get away from the city to the passive solar-powered cabin in the woods, the climate cabin, as I like to call it. And this weekend, I had some time to go through an interview that I shot with Dr. Tammy Nemeth at the Freedom Talk conference this year. Now, Dr. Nemeth provided a couple of very influential reports to the Allen Inquiry, or the Alberta Inquiry, and I thought that it'd be interesting for our audience to understand a bit more about her research on the transnational progressive movement and how that's affecting um, Alberta in particular with the Tar Sands campaign and the world in general. So let's have a look at what Dr. Nemeth had to say. I'm a historian. Um, I did my undergraduate at the University of Regina. Um, then I went and did a master's degree at the University of Alberta and a PhD at the University of British Columbia. And my master's degree was about how the conservative government dismantled the national energy program. And then my PhD dissertation was on Canada-US oil and gas relations and the shift towards a continental arrangement. Um, but it got truncated um, at 1974, instead of talking about the free trade agreement. We've been living in Europe for about 20 years now, and I was teaching at a university in Germany. And at first I was just a guest lecturer because my children are young and I really didn't have time to do a course um, at that time. And so I was asked to give guest lectures on unconventional hydrocarbons and about the regulatory system in Alberta and how the oil sands are developed and what the regulatory structure was. And then I was asked to give some guest lectures on the sort of historical context of um, hydrocarbon development and geopolitical relations. And then after a few years, I was asked to do a course on the geopolitics of energy and the environment. There was this really terrible hit piece on German public television about the oil sands, about how they're destroying the environment, they're wrecking everything, it's a wild west out there, and there's no regulations. And that was why I was kind of asked to talk about, at this class, um, the regulatory structure because there is one, and <laughs> it wasn't what was being conveyed on public television there. And there was also this massive campaign in the UK from co-op, um, and they would have big billboards about how the oil sands were destroying things and so on. Um, and I saw in our little town, there was probably 10,000 people in our town, every Saturday Greenpeace would be out in the public square, and they would be handing out information about how the tar sands was wrecking the world. So I'm looking at all this and I'm like, there's something going on here. So if I were to think about how I wanted to end the tar sands, if they're finished, what would be the strategy of doing so? So I worked out, okay, they would want to be cutting, shutting down pipelines, they would be wanting to litigate, these are the different sort of strategies and tactics, it's what they're doing in Keystone, you know, delay, delay, delay. You get activists doing stuff, you get uh, protests doing stuff, and then I saw Vivian Krause's work and I, I thought, yeah, she gets it. You know, there's these foundations that are, that are funneling money because who's funding all this, right? Who's, who's doing it all? There was a whole bunch of controversy about the fuel quality directive that was designed specifically to exclude Canadian hydrocarbons from entering the, Euro the European Union. And they had to twist themselves in a knot to permit Venezuela. So they called that Venezuelan oil extra heavy oil and Canada was called tar sands something or other. I can't remember now. So then when I heard that the Allen Inquiry was going on, I thought, well, I hope they <laughs> understand the bigger picture and not just focus on the funding because why they're being funded and why this is happening is really important so you get the response right. So um, I was contacted by Steve Allen and said he said I've heard about your work and um, I'd like you to just maybe contribute a report about setting out this bigger picture 
And I thought, okay, well, I'll put together the bigger picture that how I see it, right? And, and pulling together all of these different things. And so I submitted that report and um, he said it was, it was very informative and very helpful to understand the bigger picture. And then after the Great Reset came out and, and whatnot, and there was lots of different developments, he asked if I would write a supplement to take into account these changes that had happened because I submitted this, um, a new global paradigm in April 2020. And so all of these other things were happening. So by the end of, I think it was September, October, I submitted the second one, the supplement that was taking into account all of these different developments with the Great Reset and um, they were holding different kinds of um, meetings in September, the UN meetings and so on. And, and uh, then there was the recovery summit. There was all of these different initiatives that had been put forward supposedly by, you know, arm's length organizations from the government, but they were fully, there, there were people who were affiliated with the government who were participating in these summits and whatnot. So um, Canada 2020 had their big thing and um, the one that Gerald Butts set up, the Task Force for a Resilient Recovery. So there were, were all these different things and so he asked me to, to talk about those. So I, I wrote the supplement to take into account all of those things. And Mark Carney had been really busy talking about stuff as well, so I had a big little section about Mark Carney. Um, and then in January, that, that's what my contribution was to the Allen Inquiry to try and help um, shed some light on what the bigger picture was. <laughs>